But we have to remember the name above every name. When I, you guys have heard me preach many times. When I was a young believer, I didn't know all the Scripture I know now to stand on, but I knew one name. I knew Jesus. And I'm going to go over and look at the Word this morning where it talks about the name of Jesus, demons tremble. It's, it's time for the church of the living God to stop trembling at demons and start making them tremble. With the name of that's above every other name, and go Jesus. There was demons within three county blocks right now that just scattered. I promise you, because I've got the name above every other name. Job went through things. He was stuck in an in-between season. It sucked for Job for a while, but he never cursed the name of Jesus. He knew who his God was and he knew who he was in his God and he refused to come out of that place and he stayed there. Now listen, there's people that put themselves in bad places. I was just talking to a good minister friend yesterday, the day before. Do you remember? And uh, we were talking about people and Dumb choices they make that's heartbreaking as for pastors. And see, the Bible talks about it though. The Bible talks about pleasure for a season. Now he was an idiot when I was running from God. I tried every one of those seasons, but nobody ever see the, the church has made a couple of mistakes. One, they tried to tell you the world's no fun, which is a lie. The world is tons of fun, but each one of those seasons ends in misery. And when you try them all long enough, you end up very unhappy. And for me, I was an idiot and tried all of them, so there's nothing to tempt me with. Not proud of it, but hey, it's been worked good for God's sake. Ain't nothing he's got to offer me. But the goal is for the people that they don't know the rest of that verse, it goes on and says, there's pleasures forevermore at the right hand of the Father. Whereas where that name is, Jesus! Amen. That is where Jesus sits. Pleasures forevermore. They never run out. They never stop. There's no end to his joy. There's no end to his peace. Those are the kind of treasures and the kind of pleasures that don't rot, don't corrupt, and don't go away. Now, are the enemy going to try to steal, kill, and destroy them? Absolutely. That's why the Bible says, take every thought captive that exalts itself above the mind of Christ. And if you're if he can sit there and play negative Nancy with you, he will steal your peace and joy all day long. But you need to remember that you have the name that's above every other name. How are you going to take it captive? I don't know all the scriptures like you do, Pastor. Well, man, this didn't say this. Jesus! Amen. And I promise you, those things will flee. They will shatter and they will break. Right then and there. And all of a sudden, clarity will come back in your mind. That's right. yes. You need to learn the Word. You need to learn to stand on the Word. We're big about that. How's everybody doing on their Bible reading plan? You version's been really messed up for a while. Just keep working through it. I've been with them for 15 years. It's the most good. I, I, I get frustrated with them on a daily basis, and I'm talking with them, and they're working on it. But don't lose the course. It's the thing of the enemy because they have helped millions read their Bible on a daily. Yes. And the enemy is upset. Because you learn the name of Jesus. The name that's above every other name. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Somebody say with me, that must be an in-between season. Because hope can only be deferred, it can never be stopped. But the enemy convinces you that it is hopeless. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. He convinces you that it's hopeless. What's the point? Why continue to go on? Why persevere for this? Why, why, why should I just keep pushing? I can't see a way out. Man, then you are prime time for a miracle because if you could have fixed it, you already would have and you wouldn't have needed a Savior. But it's hope deferred. It's never hopeless. Why? Because God is the God of hope. 
Romans 15, 13. How can, that's who He is. It's not something He does. It's who He is. He's, you can confidently anticipate that the promises of God are yes and amen. That's what it means if you want to get all theologian. Confidently anticipating. I'm like a kid with a, that you took, took me to a candy store and you promised you were going in to get me candy. I'm going to sit in that car until you bring the candy out and nothing will deter me. I'm confidently anticipating. You say it, I believe it. I'm staying here to receive it. But the enemy comes along in these in-between times and defers hope and tries to make you hopeless and steal your faith. And you need to remember that you have the name above every other name. You're serving the God. He's not, he's not a God. He's the God. Amen. Whenever they ask him, who do you want us to tell them who you are? He said, you tell them I am. I am. Whatever they have need of, whatever they need, I'm that. That's what he said, God. We've got sucked up into worship songs and, and, and feelings and emotions instead of standing on the Word. I love powerful songs. The songs we sung this morning were powerful and the anointing flowed in here. Wasn't you so glad he, he didn't go, well, we didn't meet your quota on number in the pews today, so I'm not going to come here. Those people really affected you. That's not what the Holy Spirit did, did he? He didn't know no different. He seen, he seen people worshiping, lifting him up, and he said, I'm going to come minister to those hungry people who are calling upon my name. Where his name is lifted up, he will draw all men unto him. Are you lifting his name up? You know, sometimes I got to remind myself when I'm in that in between place. How many know Lazarus? He was like, he was dead. He was like, listen, I, I thought I made it to the other side. Leave me here. But how many know when Jesus calls your name, even when you're dead, you respond? Some of you are kind of in a dead place, and Jesus is calling your name this morning. Say it. So when Jesus calls, we answer. Something inside us quickens. And we go, man, I gotta respond to that. See, I want that we means we want the name of Jesus stamped on us that we're co heirs with Christ. That we can cry, Abba Father. How do you do that? By making Jesus Lord of your life. He's not your sugar daddy. He's now your boss, your king, and you're there to serve Him. Does it come with great rewards? Absolutely. But if it was about the rewards, all the apostles would have lived a great life and been kings and not got martyred. But I hate to say it this way, but they embraced the suck and overcame and showed us all that there was nothing the enemy could do that God couldn't do better and see us through. Because the main thing, they, they, they realized this world wasn't the finishing place, it was the beginning place. But what about if you started deciding you're going to do that today? What about if you decided you've had enough of the in-between place you're in? And you decided you believed that you were a king's kid and joined heir with Christ. And you started declaring the name of Jesus over the things that were coming at you today. And you stepped out in a new boldness, believing who you were in Christ and can do what he said, said you could do. And you started going, Jesus! What's going to happen in your world? Don't let it be a few moments this morning that you feel good. Go home new resolve. I, I, right now I can feel the Spirit of God. Those are embracing it. Something's welling up in you. You're like, man, I, I've had enough of this in-between place. And if you're being honest, I don't think there's anybody in the room today that ain't felt a little bit in the in-between place. And it's time to break out. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So it didn't just say the ones that said his name in a prayer. It said those that are led by, right? Those that let the Spirit guide them. 
For you have not received the spirit of bondage unto fear. Okay, so you know we talk about fear over faith, and we get us faith-filled people give up people with a, with spirit of fear a hard way to go because without faith it's impossible to please God. But let's not be naive and say that you don't never have to wrestle with it. You've just got to learn where to put it in the right place and not let it have rule over you. Can I get an amen? Amen. But you receive the spirit of adoption, whereby you cry, "Abba, Father." Listen, I was once lost. I was not born a Jew. I mean, I could have some Jewish blood in me way back. I don't know. But I'm grafted in. How many know when you get your adoption papers, from that point on, they see you as part of that family? It's no longer you're this or that. That's who you are. How many know you got your adoption papers and you're now Jesus Christ is your brother? He's going to take care of you, correct? Right. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Philippians 2, 9. Wherefore also God highly exalted him and gave unto him a name which is above what? Amen. Every name. Well, you don't know what I'm going through, preacher. Well, let me tell you a name that's above. It. See, it's above cancer, it's above addiction, poverty. It's above all of it. But, you know, some seasons you sowed yourself and God's going to see you through it. you got to keep the faith. Other ones, the enemies came to test you and God's going to still what? Guess what? See you through it. I mean, on Lazarus, he had to go through a little something, but it didn't stop the outcome when the name above every other name showed up. See, right now, I'm declaring Jesus as a banner over this church that people are going to draw in from the northeast, west, and south. And then we're going to be a healthy body that's going to be able to love and minister to people the way that God always intended. It says, if I'll be lifted up, He'll draw all men unto Him, right? So that we can all together as a corporate body go, Jesus! Amen. So on the count of three, one, two, Three, Jesus! That was pretty good. Now some of you need to declare that over your own lives this morning. That thing that looks impossible. Whether it be spouse, brother, sister, job. I don't know what the thing is. You know, the enemy's good. He's got a, he's got a stupid long list of things that he tries to do to tear people down. There's one name above every name. Well, you don't know what I'm dealing with. Has it got a name? Well, yeah. Okay, well, I know the name above them. Amen. You know how you want the boss's boss? Well, you've got the boss's boss boss. <laughs> There's no name higher than him. There's no bigger food chain. Whatever it is, has it got a name? Yeah, I've got the name of it. Great. We know the one over it. But listen, life and death is in the power of what? The tongue. He says before you blesses and curses, right? Mark chapter 11 verses 22 through 24 says whosoever shall have whatsoever they ask. Asking is what? Speaking. You've got to say something. You've got to say to your mouth. Well, I don't know what to say. Well, start with the name above every other name and go, Jesus! And expect it to move. Well, he's got those, those sayings. Expect you're connected to your believer. And I just don't have, well, listen, do you, you know Jesus? Yeah, I know Jesus. Then say that! Yes, you need to learn the Word. Yes, you need to put Scripture to it. Yes, we've been teaching all that. But sometimes when you're tired and worn down, all you may have left in the tank is just Jesus. And it is enough. No matter what the enemy has to say, there is a name that's above it. And his name is Jesus. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. I'm tired of watching him. I've had enough. I'm declaring Jesus. The name which is above every name, and that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth. Listen, they all bow. There is nothing over. When, they, when you say Jesus, they all go, Bloom. 
I don't care what disease it is. I, listen, I've studied. We've told you that you know you're already healed. You're not trying to get healed, and so you may not know. I don't know all the scriptures, Pastor, for that. But do you know Jesus? Yes, that He's the name above cancer. But you have to believe it. You've got to make Jesus Lord of your life. Remember that's how we started this? If He's not Lord of your life, if He's not over every area of your life, then He can't help you. You don't have a, you don't have a legal contract to, to stand in that and the enemy knows it. Well, how do I know if He's Lord of my life? Well, you submitted every area to Him? Yeah, but I'm not perfect. Neither am I. But are you striving to be perfect? Do when you miss it, do you repent and then turn your course? And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is what? Lord. That means he's ruler. He's the boss. What he says goes. It's not your opinion. It's not what you think. It's not what you want to happen. It's whatever Jesus says goes. If you, want to, if you want to be able to stand in faith and use His name, then He has to be Lord of your life. It's not about just holiness. It's not about this perfection. It's about saying, you're my Lord. Listen, David, Jesus, not Jesus, but God was David's Lord even though David securely screwed up and he had to reap some stuff. But how could you tell he was his Lord? Because he never quit seeking God's face and trying to do right by his Lord. And God said he was a man after his own heart. So this week, when Satan shows up and you're discouraged, or those things that had you beaten down, I just want you to start saying Jesus and believe it and expect it and step back into a place of hope and break free from the spirit of hopelessness. Because my God shall supply all our needs according to His riches and glory. We'll do one more thing. It's kind of silly. How many here have something that jumped up in your spirit while I've been preaching that you're ready to declare Jesus over? All right. Well, on the count of three, whatever that is, say it out loud. You don't have to say it so that everyone can hear you. And then after that, after you get it, we're going to count to three, and we're all just going to declare to Jesus. We want his name above every other name. Start declaring Jesus. Now, the Bible says if you resist the devil, he shall flee. All right, you got your stuff. One, two, three. Confess it, tell it to go. One, two, three. 